So now we're watching Team Canada against Team USA. I think that's the best matchup that we can look so far. What we're seeing here is that some regular players that are in the NBA and are not really known to be scorers, not really known to do much, like Dylan Brooks, um, are able to actually be contributors in their team. I think it comes from the three-point line being closer. Some of those players that are sometimes having issues with the deep shot, uh, they can't really penetrate. Now with the smaller court, it allows them to be able to take pretty much a two-point field goal or a mid-range and turn it into a three-point shot. So you have RJ Barrett as another example of someone that's not really a really three-point shooter, but now as he plays FIBA, he's able to actually be a consistent three-point shooter. Something actually really funny is that you see Steph Curry making one here, but throughout the rest of the tournament, we're going to see Steph Curry and the Team USA that actually have great players struggle from the deeper range. And I think it comes from them not being used to shoot from so close or taking their competition um, not serious enough. Here against Team Canada is a clear example of they're not trying hard enough. You could see throughout the game, obviously this is a recap of the game, but throughout the actual game, you could see that they weren't actually cutting hard. They weren't actually trying too hard. They were playing this game as everything could be easy. They could easily win. But Team Canada still has a MVP caliber player in Shea, uh, Gigoris Alexander. This guy can actually literally carry Team Canada. But what we're noticing now if you look at international team is that they have all incredible players but every one of the incredible players or an even matchup for one of the guys in team USA regardless who it is some of those guys are damn near unstoppable if you look at someone like Luka, Yanis, Jokic and even in certain example Shea if you watch the full game you'll see how difficult and how much of a struggle team USA had to contain Shea and his scoring but when it becomes a problem is really when Team USA start clicking. They slowly start creeping back towards actually having an even game and eventually they start taking the lead on the game. And other teams also have a struggle to come back because if they have an advantage on Team USA, obviously they can maintain it, sometimes hardly. But as you can see right now, those guys are not used to play some of those players. You have some of the bench players and their respective team playing against their starting uh, counterpart. Um, simple example, you can look at someone like Nikhil Alexander. Anybody else in their team sometimes that plays a bench role But now they have to play a starting role against their own starter counterpart. And then also you have to look at some players now that some players now that are helped to be coming role players, but in their respective team, um, they're superstars. So when it comes bench against bench, Team Canada is having a hard time to uh, compete. Again, you can see a guy like Dylan Brooks that is really someone that's hungry. He's able to get uh, better shots in a league where the fouls and the aggressivity, I think right now it's funny that you see it's actually becoming more physical. But again, you can see that Team Canada is struggling just to really stay in the game. They actually have, they can't make any mistake. If you've seen any of the other games from um, the showcase, you can see no one thing. Team USC starts a lot of their game behind and catch back. I think it comes from them underestimating the other teams. But the problem here that a lot of those international teams didn't notice, and it comes back to what I was saying with their having super players. Those super players can start the game and keep it a fair matchup, an even matchup. But as the game keep on going, those one or two guys, they get tired and they can't keep up. So as we see, the more the game goes, the bigger the lead from TOC will be. The only exception is a game from a team like South Sudan where, again, they had an incredible game. Those guys are guys that never had those type of shooting spurs even in their respective leagues. So they had the best game they could have had. And also, again, South Sudan does have a lot of tall athletic players. So the chances, again, like I said, with a shorter three-point line that those guys become higher performer or high. 
And because they don't really have to share the ball, key guys are clearly the, the top performers or, or guys expecting to score, contrary to Team USA. They don't really enter into any issue of like, oh, who should it, right? Well, Team USA seems sometimes to have the issue where can everybody wants to shoot and then they'll have another moment where everybody wants to pass it to get someone else a shot. And this is also a scheme you need to work on. But the scary part is that they're playing games with so many mistakes, um, no real play, no order. Um, it looks more so like AAU basketball, but they are winning the games. When you compare this to uh, OG Dream Team, um, and the reading team and all the older teams they were still playing with some type of uh, team chemistry some type of team play it wasn't really like my, my ball my play while these ones they're the Avengers as they call them they're not really playing with any type of team chemistry yeah they're playing as a team they have spurs of moments where they actually do it but for most of the game they kind of all play their own game and it's always that one-on-one -on -one situation five times in a row. It's just that they're all so good that it makes it so difficult. But the scary part is what happens when Team USA actually does play as a team, right? You can see here, um, Team Canada is really struggling. Now they're really playing as a group. You know, Steph Curry with Ali, like if it's Dwayne Wade, I like that. I like that, but that's what's starting. Now the problem is starting. Now I get like Denver Brooks, he's going to play hard. That's a big bomb, do good shot, big dog, there you go. Um, other guys had a problem, John and B here, you see he got, he got a foul for nothing and was able to be fouled out in such a short game. That's not a problem that seems he would have to watch, but with AD coming off the bench, um, he might just be hurting John and B's um, stock value right now because AD was just going to cook. You know, guys like AD and Braun that actually can't really easily be stopped, and except if they're not challenged by other super players. And those type of FIBA World Cup situation, um, those international countries don't really have players to guard them, especially if you have a Devin Booker, Steph Curry, Anthony, Anthony Edward, and a KD on the court at the same time. They have to rely on playing their own players, and that's the problem. A lot of those teams have great zone defense, a lot of them have a great double team. But against Team USA, you actually can't keep anybody open. Look at this double alley hoop almost, they should have dunked it together. That's actually elite. A guy like Terry Sally Burden, right now, if he understands that his only role is to get other people involved, he shouldn't even try to score. That's where the best of him will, will come out. There's too many scores, just pass the ball, brother. You'll have 20 assists, easy. A guy like this guy, and really want to put the bucket in the basket and really wants it i think that's all you should do play defense when you get the ball shoot it and team yes should let him do what he wants to do because that could actually turn out to be a really successful recipe there again shade carrying his team oh sorry that's nikki my fault my fault but now you have those you know Bench players have to play against Team, U Team USA top caliber guys. It's working. I mean, it's still an NBA player, it's still NBA players scoring. But the thing is, it's almost impossible for them to really win this game. You can see it's an inevitable, inevitable outcome. A lot of the guys in Team USA are not sweating. You know, Jurelli played a crazy defense, and same defense was really giving it all, and then he's here just chilling. And there you go, easy little bucket. I get like Drew Holiday as actually a key player there because he's a super, superstar caliber guy that can actually easily play his role. You know, again, Braun also for, obviously not going to play defense, but now he's a thing. Who the, who the hell is this guy? Now he has to go Braun. Double team, then what? There you go. And like I was saying, you actually can't keep those guys, let you leave those guys open. But they can actually do their one on one matchup. Good job. It's a great play. Tough bucket on an 80. There you go. But now that's what happened next. There you go. Really tough. And they're not even there playing around. This enough intense movement for Team USA. They're literally chilling right now. Literally chilling. 
the hell is this? Who the hell is that? What the hell are these guys? You know, so there you go. Now they're playing guys that are never even gonna make it to um, the tournament. Pure, I don't know who the hell they are. Pure, most likely NCAA players or high uh, ranking rookies. I actually don't know who those guys are. And there you go. Even though they were winning, once she gets tired, Team USA is gonna win the game. Every time. Thanks for watching, follow for more.